Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I'm going to be covering how to do low poly graphic art based on an image. So before we get started with this technique, I want to show some environment setup that we want to do that's going to make trying to do this a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster. And so there's two operations that I'm going to show that we want to associate with shortcut keys. And the first one is going to be the close selected open contours operation. So the way that we can bind a shortcut key to this operation is anywhere in open space on a custom to or on a toolbar, we can right click and say customize. Then we can go to keyboard. And in this case, since the what we want to create a shortcut for falls under the category of vector objects, we can go under objects. And then if we scroll down this very tiny window, we can find close and then we can see that it has the same description, right? Close all selected open contours. And so then with that selected, we can click in here and then choose what key binding we want to use. In my case, I'm going to do Alt C. I already know that that's not assigned to anything. So then I'll click assign and then I'll say close. So what that allows me to do is now if I, you know, have the pen tool selected, I have the straight edge selected and then I just start clicking and I create those two. Instead of clicking this to close this, I can just hit Alt C. And now it's closed. Now we're going to want to do the same thing for this apply method, but for the life of me, I could not find anywhere in this menu um, an equivalent command that does that. If uh, anybody knows what it is, feel free to post it in the comments. Um, it'll be helpful. But in lieu of that, I'm going to show you a way you can get around this kind of an issue um, by just creating a quick custom script. So what we can do is, let's say I go and draw another, uh, you know, triangle, closed it, but now I want to hit apply. What I can do is hit record, and then I can hit apply. And that's really the only operation I want to save. So having recorded just that one operation, I can save. And you can see I've already kind of done this already. So I'm just going to save it as that apply nodes.psp script. And so now I have it available to use as a script if I wanted to. So I can say, you know, again, once again, if I draw another triangle and then close that and then run my script, we can see it kind of deselected everything. So that's great, but that doesn't get it so that it's simple from a shortcut key point of view. So there's a few more steps we got to do to make that connection. First, what we can do is go once again back to customize. But instead of going to keyboard, we're going to go to scripts. And then in scripts, what we can do is we can select some icon. It doesn't matter which one. I'll pick the green light bulb just for example. And normally we'd be able to kind of, you know, pick whatever script we want to bind that to. So even though I already have it selected, my example would be to go to recorded, clicked on apply nodes, and then hit bind. And so then what we have now is this script associated with this icon. Next, what we can do then is go back to keyboard and now in categories, I can say bound scripts and there's my apply nodes as well. And then I can now apply a shortcut key. So in this case, I'll give it Alt X. Hit assign and then hit close. So now, for example, if I were to redraw this triangle one more time, just clicking two nodes, now I can hit Alt C so that it closes and then Alt X to apply. Now, you might say, well, why don't we just combine those two into a single operation? And that could be done, except there's going to be another step where we have to set the color of the inside of the triangle. So that's why you'll see in a little bit why there are two separate operations. But um, that's now us having set up our environment so we're ready to tackle this effect and be able to do it at speed. One thing I will note if you are using PaintShop Pro 2020 is um, something got broke at some point and those key bindings do not maintain if you close PaintShop Pro. So you'll, 
even though the script, for example, that custom script we, we created will be saved and it will be there and it will be um, available, you'll have to do the key bindings every time you open PaintShop Pro 2020. 2019, I believe it worked before, um, but I'm hoping they fix this pretty soon. But anyway, just keep that in mind and let's get into how we use this technique. So here we have our image that we're going to be working with and creating a low poly render. The first thing we're going to actually do is turn on the grid and then if you want to be able to set what the grid you know resolution is uh, you can go to grid guide and snap properties and in here you can set um, you know the, the the smaller the number you know the more squares you're going to have in the grid so the finer the resolution. Note that there's default and there's current image settings. I have mine set to 10 and 10. I think this is sufficient for what I'm trying to do. Um, again, you're, you're going low fidelity, so you really shouldn't need a grid that is too fine detailed because it's really meant to be just large triangles that are going to be colored with like, you know, the average color of the background per se. But with the grid turned on, if we have snap to grid turned on, then now, Whenever I click a point to try to draw something, it's always going to hit one of these specific intersections on the grid. So with that in mind, let's go over just the basic technique that's going to be involved here. So, so like I mentioned, it's just going to be about creating triangles and quads. And really the way I would recommend deciding where you're, or how you're going to draw them is to just think about you know, where do you want the different shades of color to be, right? I mean, you could have, for example, an entire, you know, surface or a triangle, say that's like something like this. Use Alt-C to close off our triangle. And then that represents that entire blade right there. And that kind of works out. But one thing you'll have to keep in mind is if you're going to now draw, you know, something else that's going to, you know, represent this next blade of the flower if you start you know clicking in here then you know or here and and in some cases it looks like it's going to overlap but if you don't have a situation where it doesn't overlap nicely then it's not going to create as clean of a look in terms of how all of the triangles fit together so in some ways it may be beneficial to you know break it up into smaller chunks And then there you can start to see how every connection point is always at a node. So so there shouldn't be any like nodes floating out in the ether, you know, like something like this. Okay, so now we talked about how just general practice, how to draw the nodes. But let's talk about how we decide on color. So um, the way I would approach this and recommend, you know, doing this for both speed and simplicity is, you know, draw your initial set of nodes, Alt-C, but before doing Alt-X, what we want to do is set the internal color of this enclosed piece right here. So what we can do is while it's selected, while it's still the nodes are still showing, what we can do is come over to the materials palette and we can hover over this color up here, which is kind of like representing what this color is, although currently it's transparent. But if I hover over this and hold control, now you'll what I can actually do is I can sample a color from anywhere on the screen. And even if you have multiple monitors, you could sample something even off screen. Um, but in this case, what I want to do is sample the image underneath. So I can sample this color specifically. And now that I've selected that color, I can turn on that fill and even turn off the outline. And if we turn off the background, you can see we've got that nice now color filled, you know, low poly face colored accurately based on the image below it. And then now that I've colored it, I can hit Alt X to close that piece. And that's really all it is. It's really just a matter of identifying those node locations, simplifying your life with 
the shortcut keys, and then filling in the color as you go. So now that we've covered the basic principle that's in play here, I'm just going to show a sped up version of me finishing this flower and then we'll close out the video. One thing I recommend as you embark on one of these kinds of projects is to keep the stroke visible. Uh, I know that there's going to be steps involved that, you know, you set the color of the internal, you know, of the polygon, but keep the stroke visible because then it'll be a lot easier as you keep drawing the next polygons, which lines you should be using and which nodes you should be overlapping with. At the end is when you'll want to just go through and then turn off all those strokes. In the video that I'm going to show, that's the time lapse, I'm manually turning them all off, but I've also created a script for patrons that will automatically disable all the strokes in a given vector layer. So there you have it, that's the low poly effect uh, technique. It's definitely one of the techniques where the more you work on it, the more you practice it, uh, the faster you'll get. And using the shortcut keys hopefully will make this whole process a little bit more bearable given how many polygons you'll have to actually create given the different kinds of images. But that's it for me. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you would like to get updates of new content, Go ahead and click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page on the link on the TV and I'll see you guys next time.